Old ass streets, man. I'm sorry, what you say? You are convicted. You're convicted of assault and battery and brandishing. Yeah. This man right here is Robert's husband. He got into trouble with the law over 16 years ago and was convicted of assault, battery, and brandishing a weapon. But husband did not show up for his court hearings, causing his case to drag on for years, even though there was a warrant issued for his arrest. And this day, husband appears before Judge Linis Bryant on Zoom court hearing to review his case. So I'm going to set the matter for you. If you see a probation and file, see if we can figure out what he has done and what he has not done. Mr. Osborne is going to come back to the court March 6th. March 6th at 10 o'clock. However, Osborne is acting totally defiant and remote. He's got an attitude, acting all big and tough turns himself away from the judge and calls the case an old ass case to make matters even worse. Old ass case, man. I'm Ooh. sorry, what you say? Come on, speak your truth, Mr. Osborne, because we're tired of the case too. The judge decided she had had enough. She stated that Osborne's probation would be ended the next day and that he had to appear before the court in person. He bladed his body to the court, turned his head from the court, ignored the court when I was talking to him. So I just changed my mind. He's tired of the case and so am I. We're going to just adjourn the case till tomorrow. Mr. Osborne is going to come in person and we're going to close this case out. Anything further? So is there any way the court would... would... No, I'm sick of the case too. And so tomorrow, we're no longer going to have to deal with the case. It's going to be over tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Anything further? Um, not at this time. And that's the moment Osborne realized he had messed up. Osborne showed up the next day as scheduled and was now facing the reality of his actions. Come on up, Mr. Osborne. So I promised Mr. Osborne that I was going to end his probation today. And today I am keeping my promise. The court is going to revoke the probation, sentence Mr. Osborne to 365 days in the Wayne County Jail on the brandishing and 93 days on the assault and battery. Sentences will run concurrently. Appearing to regret them, but the judge wasn't having it. You are convicted. You're convicted of assault and battery and brandishing. You have been an absconder from justice. You did not show up. You are the one dragging this out. You should have took care of this back in 2006, finished this probation and went on about your business. You the one keep dragging your past around, dragging it around like some unwanted, dirty laundry. You're doing that. However, Osborne's new public defender was able to save his ass. Well, I'm asking the court to give Mr. Mr. Osborne an opportunity to demonstrate that he does want this matter from the past, squarely and solely in the past, without having to go to jail for a year and three months. And I think he hear, he sees that right now. There's too much on the line to not be thinking before we talk so that he can um, put this matter squarely behind him, Your Honor. The judge, seeing that husband had changed his attitude and recognizing that husband was now agreeing to the probation terms, she reconsiders. Mr. Osborne, you changed your mind? You, you want to deal with it now? Yes, ma'am. Oh. I'll go back to what I said yesterday before all of this occurs. And I'll set it for March the 6th. At 10 o'clock. Osborne returned to the courtroom as scheduled for his probation review hearing. The judge examined a formal report which indicated that Osborne had failed to complete the terms of his original probation order. This included requirements such as attending a 12-week anger management program, as well as paying all court-ordered costs and fees. Let's get it done, all right? Yes, ma'am. 
Seeing that husband had not fulfilled these probationary conditions, the judge imposed an additional six months of probation. The purpose of this was to give husband another chance to finally satisfy the original probation terms he had previously neglected. The case was then postponed and said to be heard again at a later date. At that future hearing, the judge will evaluate whether husband has successfully finished the anger management classes and paid all outstanding court fees and fines. If so, the judge may then consider officially discharging husband from probation. However, the ultimate outcome remains uncertain, as the judge did not specify what would happen if husband fails to comply with the requirements over the next six months. Husband's ability to meet the court's expectations in the interim will determine the final resolution of his case. The key thing to learn from this case is that husband likely would have not gotten probation again after his defiant behavior. If the judge had refused to give him another chance, husband probably would have received a harsher sentence like jail time instead of just probation. This shows why it's important to be careful with your words and think before you speak. Once you say something, you can't take it back. In the future, anyone in a similar situation should approach the court more respectfully. Acting more humble and cooperative increases the chances of getting leniency from the judge. The main takeaway is that actions and words have consequences. It's wise to think before speaking because what you say can affect the outcome.